What's up, everybody? Today is a very exciting day. You know why? Because it is actually two days ahead of the Samsung Galaxy Fold 2's launch in Australia, which is supposed to happen on the 24th of September, but today's the 22nd and it's already here. So thank you, Samsung. Uh, I guess pre-ordering things does have its benefits to some degree. So why don't we take a look uh, at the package, open it up, and see what our first impressions are like. I think uh, the folding phones now, or at least compared to the first generation, as I'm sure you've heard many people say already, has been a vast improvement. And I think, uh, I think now it's time, it's ready for prime time, and I think it'd be really cool just to see how this uh, form factor affects apps and software, uh, which is mainly my point of interest, just to see how things change and what people would do to accommodate. Um, I guess things like flex mode, uh, OEM implementations of how foldables should work and of course we have like the uh, Microsoft Surface Duo which is another interesting device but I think I prefer something a little bit like this where um, you get mostly the same form factor as a phone uh, but then you can kind of whip it out and then it becomes a somewhat smallish tablet uh, but it's just nice to get that extra screen real estate so why don't we take a look at the uh, packaging here it was delivered this morning and um, let's just slice it and dice it there's probably a better way to open this, but um, at this angle, maybe, okay. Okay, here it is, okay, we've got a brown cardboard box inside. It looks very generic, and there's nothing in the bag, so we'll toss that aside. And uh, here it goes. Uh huh, uh huh, a receipt. Yink. Um, you may notice this box is also quite big, and there's two in here apparently. Um, that's because someone else is also very excited about foldable phones. And uh, so one of them is not mine. Okay, let's just put it that way. Wow, these boxes look pretty sick. They got the Z there. And this is the uh, black one. I forgot the exact name for it, the Mystic Black version. Um, because uh, I don't really like the copper one. And I think that's all I saw on YouTube as well. So today we'll be able to have a look at Maybe the differences uh, and what the Mystic Black one actually looks like. Uh, so let's open it up. Okay, so here it is. And you may be wondering about the price uh, because it was, I think, 2,000 American dollars, which translates to about 3,000 Australian dollars. Uh, we have GST and all other kinds of cool tax, uh, but I respect tax. Tax is pretty cool. Um, but, anyways, the Samsung Education Store here in Australia actually offered 20% off the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 and that put it down to about 2.4 uh, Australian dollar dues. Okay, there's another seal up here and I'm talking an awful lot and there's nothing happening. Alright, so let's slide it out. Wow, okay, so that's, that's that. Ready for the unfolding change the shape of the future introducing Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G nice I like card stock thick card stock here we have a package uh, full of cool things I suppose why don't we have a look at what we get I'm not even sure what we get inside this opens up at the back Okay, has a SIM ejection tool, uh, which we will need shortly as I transfer my SIM card over. We have some quick start guide documents and a warranty card. Uh, maybe we would like to see some Samsung stickers at one point, but man, I'll say that there is a, a lack of cool stuff that you get in the box. I think I remember recalling that the first generation even had some Galaxy Buds, I don't know. But I don't really want the live beans or whatever it is after watching a review by another fellow Australian that I recently stumbled upon. And um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't buy those, or and I'm glad they didn't send it to me. 
because I don't think anyone would use it. Anyways, here it is. I, I mean, it's nice to get free stuff, but I think this discount uh, already supplements the the beans here that you can buy in Australia, which are, I think, selling for 300 something dollars, which is pretty crazy. But anyways, here it is. Um, why don't we take it out of the box? It is squarer than I thought it would be. I don't know, is that a weird thing to say? And it's, um, I don't know, I was going to say it looks glossy, but I'm not too sure. So why don't we put that aside for a second and explore the box a bit more. Galaxy Z Premier Service. Um, it means you can talk to people. You have uh, discounted screen repair uh, damage because it is made out of the UTG, Ultra Thin Glass, which is uh, understandable. I respect that. Alright, so what do we get here? We get super fast charging uh, wall adapter. That's always nice, uh, but I assume that's good. This is just a placeholder for it. Anything else? We get uh, a USB type C cable, which is nice of them to include. Uh, why don't I get it out of the box for us? That's nice of them, a black type C cable. Um, that's very normal, very generic stuff. So why don't we put it back in its little pouch, chuck it away, and AKG, sound by AKG. Um, I believe it is Australian law that they must include headphones in there. Um, I remember the Pixel 1 did not include that, like, right in the box. So they had to like slap on an extra he wide headphone bundle, uh, which I thought was funny. Um, anyways, here they are. I'm pretty sure like the oh the Type C. I was gonna say this thing doesn't have a headphone jack, but that's nice. Okay, these are Type C AKG buds, which is nice. Uh, but you know me, I'm a true wireless man, so I have the Pixel buds, <laughs> the first generation ones, uh, to to use instead. I think that's all we have in the box, so. Why don't we chuck the butterfly away, and why don't we divert our attention to the fold itself. Now, I think you'd be able to use this quite normally. I don't think there's anything too special that you would do unless you like to use your smartphone, you know, by poking it and uh, dunking it in water. But here are a few things that you got to take care of. Of course, you got to take care of the screen. I would treat it like if you were using Glad Wrap, uh, Cling Wrap as the screen. I wouldn't put anything sharp near it. I would trim my fingernails twice a day just to make sure I don't have to pay for that premium discounted screen repair or replacement service. And here it also tells you that you shouldn't remove that screen protector that is built in and it's got magnets and it's not dust or water resistant or, and definitely not waterproof so please don't use this in the shower as much as you might like to. Okay so why don't we unravel the plastic that is holding it back. That's tricky, um, okay, well, there's a speck of dust on mine already, and I'm upset. <sighs> if I get my sunglasses cleaning case, there we go, that's more like it. Um, you can probably already notice the crease, uh, probably very visible there right now. It's probably not going to be as noticeable once you start using it, and maybe once you turn it on. And you can probably already see the screen protector um, right near the camera cutout. Uh, but that's cool. I like that. Alright, so why don't we fold it up? Wow, that feels pretty awesome. And this is uh, thicker than I thought it would be, which is nice. Uh, here's a Pixel 1 for comparison. Um, yeah, it's still, still got a little bit. I mean, if you had a thick case on one of your old phones, I'm pretty sure it's always the same as that. And um, this thing is actually quite tall. My hands aren't that big. Um, you know, I don't know, wow, it's quite long, elongated, and I have a pencil case that looks quite similar, which is interesting, <laughs> and that's nice. And it also looks like they have a screen protector on this front cover already, which is really nice, uh, because I was going to say, I probably need to go out and buy one now, um, because I saw people using it, you know, uh, you know, you stand it up to use your camera, right? And I'm thinking, who is going to do that, risking scratching up their screen and all? But um, that's nice, and that is a very satisfying fold. I'm kind of scared to touch it, the, the front part of the screen, but that's very nice. So, uh, why don't we take a quick tour around the device. We have some speakers at the top, 
uh, this massive camera bump at the back but I do appreciate the cameras on the Samsung phones uh, here today uh, of course we have our nice hinge with the Samsung logo I, uh, well specifically the education uh, store didn't allow you to customize the hinge uh, although we saw those cool color combinations that you could do I would have liked um, to try that out that's for sure we have our front cover display which is awesome and on the bottom here on the left hand side we have um, more speakers and we also have a type C connector here with a microphone port and on the left hand side bottom here this is probably where you put your sim card and on the right side we have our power button slash fingerprint sensor and the volume buttons here at the top so why don't we turn this on and have a looky providing it still has a bit of juice there we go wow that is cool and wow would you look at that we're ready to go so let's go through it well we should probably insert the sim card as well so why don't we try that what does that look like time to fold it up it's very um I'm gonna say like stiff-ish hinge it's not very wibbly wobbly it's very sturdy feeling so that's always a good sign so I'm just gonna pop out the sim card from my pixel 1 and uh, we'll also see how it sets up because I think that's a uh, quite interesting I don't think many people show it mainly because perhaps it's boring like oh, I already know how to set up a phone um, but sometimes you know when you're recommending phones to people and uh, they might actually want to know or you might actually want to know if it's easy to transfer all the stuff from your old phone onto your new one uh, or if you're coming from an iPhone um, will they make it easy for you to transfer your contacts and you know your text messages and whatnot and even perhaps your photos and videos because um, yeah, people aren't really often wanting to change things up too much. Well, we can have a look at the cover display as well. That looks pretty sick. Um, but yeah, not too many people are probably willing to try and try something new if it's going to uh, inconvenience them a lot. Uh, well, maybe that's just a generational thing, but um, we're going to that. Um, yeah, so. I reckon it really depends, and if they make it easy to transfer all your old stuff over, I think that's really cool. So, uh, why don't we connect to our Wi-Fi here? All right, I'm just trying to make sure there are no imperfections. So we're going to connect it to Wi-Fi. We're going to check for some updates here, and this is surprisingly nice to hold in, you know, this expanded form with one hand. My hands aren't really aren't that big, um, and it's kind of comfortable. Like I can see maybe holding it like this, um, but something like a clutch. You know, claw hand would do. Okay, what's this uh, next? Use my old device. I think this is just the Google one. Okay, no, they're smart switch. Okay, that's good. It's going to download an update for us. And that was quick, so Samsung smart switch. What's this about? Um, okay, what is this? Okay, I have an old Samsung Galaxy. I mean, an Android phone. Agree? How do I want to connect through the cable? Um, okay, so this is why I like the Pixel phones because they actually provide a USB Type-C OTG cable and I'm a huge fan of that and uh, that's because it also allows you to plug in your device and transfer all the stuff that you have over I don't want to do wireless because usually that takes a long time and I'm a busy man but actually if I'm not mistaken this should be a Type-C to Type-C cable so you can actually use this why don't we use the Samsung cable that they provide um, but for example an iPhone right you're using an iPhone, you're not going to have a, a Lightning to Type-C unless you also have one of the MacBooks um, that don't have USB Type-A ports. Uh, but I think it would just be a really nice gesture if Samsung included a USB Type-C to A dongle, uh, OTG adapter. I think that would um, solve a lot of things. So why don't we plug this in the bottom here. And um, you can see I was watching YouTube before. Alright, so why don't we plug this in here. Uh, I should probably say cable. Alright, so my other thing I was thinking of is maybe I just need to change it to file transfer or something like that. Okay. Alright, that was... Maybe maybe that was what was wrong. Um, okay, that wasn't very useful or helpful, Samsung, but that's okay. Figured it out in the end. Um, but even, even though it changed, I'm not sure it's actually going to do anything. Um, yeah, connecting. Okay, connected. Wow. Okay, so it's going to scan for whatever we need. 
uh, in order to transfer over. Okay, well I don't have much stuff on this phone. This was more of a temporary phone while I was waiting for this. Alright, so let's enroll our fingerprint here. Now the last side mounted one or fingerprint reader that I've used was actually on a Sony phone, which is really cool. I liked how it was kind of all in one button area. Uh, interested to see what face unlock would be like. Probably not like face ID. Um, I think for another one, I'd probably use like my middle finger on the left hand. So why don't we try that? So you kind of hold it like this. I don't know how well this is going to add. Okay. Adding the final touches. Okay, this is all done, so I can unplug this. Get this thing out of here. Please wait. Sign into your Samsung account. <sighs> uh, I will do this later because I need my password manager. What a day we live in. I can't remember my passwords. They tell me I shouldn't remember my passwords. Unused apps will be put to sleep in your battery life. This will cause apps to stop working correctly. What? Why? Apps have not been... Oh. Alright, okay. Well, we'll leave that. Actually, that might be annoying for some apps, but uh, hopefully you can turn it off by a per app basis. It looks like you can't, but that's alright. But here we go, we got our warnings again that were previously printed on our lovely protective sheet from before. Um, so yeah, don't press the screen or the front camera lens with a hard or sharp object, such as a pen or fingernail. Doing so could cause damage, such as scratches or dents. Um, that's fine. Don't put stuff in the middle uh, before you fold it. Probably harder than you would imagine. Uh, you would probably, you definitely need to take care when using this one. So we'll hit done and oh wow, there it is. You can see the crease there. Cool, the, the Samsung jingle, I like it. Wow, this is, this is mind blowing to be able to hold this. Let's see the results, yay. Uh, so I'll, I'll do all that other stuff later, but um, yeah, this is it. So the, the crease on this uh, screen, I don't know, you can kind of feel it when you run your hands or finger across it. Um, and you can definitely see it on, a, on the off angle. But um, when you're kind of looking directly at it, doing your thing, you can kind of notice it, mainly because i got a lot of lights around here right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, but why don't we have a look at flex mode? Uh, I know the camera has it, and uh, what is this? More modes, whatever. And if we were to kind of rotate that, we could have a little off angle there, and if we rotate it like this, we'll get our buttons down here and our lens here. And it's copied my photos, went train spotting. That's an interesting train, by the way. They're testing out new intercity trains, uh, which is really cool. Anyways, this is the home screen, this is really cool. Uh, what else can I say about it? Oh, let's open two apps at one time. Something that I don't usually do, unless I'm watching a YouTube video uh, on my old phone. So why don't we open up the Play Store, and uh, if I can guess how this works. Uh, I'm kind of used to like the iPad kind of stuff, where you, you know, drag up an icon from there. Alright, so, open a split screen view, pop up view, alright, split screen view, and uh, well, let's not go to the camera. Let's go to the settings, perhaps. We can change to a vertical one, which I think is probably really cool. You know, two things uh, kind of separated and, um, you know, doing it their own things. But that is awesome. And apparently we can go for a third app. Is that correct? I don't know. Okay, so I'll launch that. Um, yep. I'm going to turn on the gestures, too. Open in pop-up view. Yeah, what happened to that third... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was like in a promotional thing where it was like, it had this half and one down here and then one on the left-hand side. Hmm, oh well. I don't know. This is cool. I'm gonna play around with this. Um, this is definitely very awesome to touch and feel. Uh, wh okay, why don't we have a look at the gestures as well? Because that is something I'm probably going to be liking to use a lot and this 120 hertz screen is amazing to use navigation bar swipe gestures no more options oh 
Okay, so that was like the old one that they introduced in like Android 9. Um, this is a swipe up from the bottom kind of thing. Awesome. I'm used to this. <gasps> Samsung Daily. Oh. This is like Flipbook maybe. Well, yeah. Well, it's got some Microsoft apps pre-installed. That's nice. Oh, I didn't check the apps. Let's have a look. Um, you would say that perhaps you don't have Netflix. Um, you don't want to use Facebook. And the fact that it's pre-installed, maybe even as a system app, um, you know, should make you very afraid. Uh, but I use Facebook, so <laughs> not that often. Don't worry. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll leave that there. Samsung Notes, YouTube Music is on there. What is this? Global Goals. Well, that's nice. Uh, like a charity initiative. That's cool. I love charity. LinkedIn, I don't like. Um, uh, okay, so these are the Google apps that it's pre-installed, and the Samsung ones, oh dear, uh, not as much as it used to be, which is, I guess, better, uh, but it seems like you could uninstall Facebook and all that. Can I uninstall this? Yes, I can. So, I think um, the bloat on this, not as much as I thought it would be, which is nice. Already starting to get notifications and all that. Alright, so this is it, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold unboxing. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's interesting to have a first look and kind of see uh, what it's like holding something like this in your hands and just being able to see how it folds and in all its like intricate ways, which is pretty awesome. Never thought I would see something like this. Never occurred to me that anyone would want to see anything like this. But I'm sure glad someone, somewhere, thought this would be a good idea. And I must confess, they were correct. And it's already starting to pick up fingerprints from the screen protector. You know what they say, always use protection. That's it, everyone. And hopefully I'll see you around. And if you have any comments or if you want me to answer any of your questions about the Z Fold 2, uh, please put them down below. I'll be looking to make uh, just on how it's been using this, uh, what it's like, and if I have any complaints, I would say, about it. But anyway, so far so good. I mean, this is the honeymoon stage where everything is fun, everything is fantastic, until you really get down and dirty with it. Uh, but not too dirty, because that might ruin it. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next one.